Welcome to today's Bible study on the fruit of the Spirit. I'm so glad you've joined us today. Whether this is your first time or you've been a part of our studies before, I believe that God has something special for you in this moment. He knows exactly what you need, and as we dive deep into His Word, I pray you'll feel His presence, hear His voice, and discover new insights that will strengthen your walk with Him. God's Word is living and active, and it has the power to transform us from the inside out. So, open your heart and mind to receive what He has for you today. Now, let's get into our topic, the fruit of the Spirit. You've probably heard this phrase many times before. It's often used to describe the virtues that should be evident in the life of a believer, but today, I want to share something that might surprise you. We often hear about the fruits of the Spirit as though we are talking about a bunch of individual qualities that we pick and choose from, like different fruits in a bowl. But here's the catch, it's not plural. It's not fruits of the Spirit, it's fruit. One single fruit that embodies all of these beautiful qualities together. In Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23, the Apostle Paul writes, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Did you catch that? He says a fruit, not a fruits. That may seem like a small detail, but it carries a deep truth. These characteristics, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control aren't separate items on a checklist that we can compartmentalize in our lives. They are all facets of a single, unified fruit that grows from living by the Spirit of God. Think about that for a moment. The Holy Spirit doesn't develop some of these traits in you while ignoring others. It's not as though you're supposed to have love but not joy, or peace but not patience. Instead, all these qualities are interwoven, growing together in the life of a believer who is walking in step with the Spirit. This is why it's called the fruit, singular, because it reflects the holistic work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Each part of this fruit supports and enhances the other parts, creating a harmonious and well-rounded expression of Christ's character in us. So, as we walk through today's study, keep in mind that God's desire is to cultivate all of these virtues in you as one complete, unified fruit that reveals His transforming power in your life. Imagine holding an orange in your hand. It's a single fruit, but when you peel it open, you see that it has different sections inside. Each segment is part of the same orange, unique in shape and taste, yet all belonging to that one fruit. You can't separate one section and call it a completely different fruit, they all work together to make up the whole. The same concept applies to the fruit of the Spirit. The characteristics that Paul lists, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are like the segments of that orange. Each quality is distinct, but they are all interconnected, flowing from the same source, the Holy Spirit working within us. These traits aren't random or isolated. They don't develop separately or independently from one another. Rather, they grow together as one unified fruit in the life of a believer who is living by the Spirit. Think of how love connects to joy or how peace relates to patience. When you're walking in God's love, it's hard not to feel joy. When you experience His peace, you're more likely to practice patience with others. Each part of the fruit is woven into the others and together they reflect the fullness of God's character. This interconnectedness is important because it shows us that spiritual growth is holistic. God doesn't just want to improve one area of your life while leaving the rest unchanged. He wants to shape your entire being, your mind, your heart, your actions, so that you reflect the image of Christ. When the Holy Spirit is at work in you, these virtues don't grow in isolation, they influence and strengthen one another, creating a balanced and complete spiritual life. It also means that we can't pick and choose which traits to focus on or decide that we are strong in one area but don't need to worry about the others. Just like with an orange, every segment is needed to make the fruit whole. 
Similarly, God's Spirit is working to develop all of these qualities in you. If you're lacking in patience, it might be because you need to grow more in peace or love. If self-control feels difficult, perhaps your faithfulness to God's will is still maturing. All of these traits come from the same source, the Holy Spirit. He is the one who empowers us to grow in each area and as we yield to him, the different aspects of the fruit will begin to flourish, creating a beautiful, well-rounded reflection of God's character in our lives. Why is it important that it's a single fruit? Understanding that the fruit of the Spirit is singular, not plural, reveals something truly powerful about how God works to shape us. Each of the traits listed in Galatians 5, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are part of one complete fruit. This means that God's plan for our spiritual growth is holistic. He isn't interested in developing just one or two good qualities in us while allowing others to remain underdeveloped. Instead, he desires that all of these characteristics grow and flourish together, forming a balanced, Christ-like character within us. When we walk by the Spirit, God works on every part of our lives. You're not just meant to be loving without experiencing joy or peaceful but lacking patience. All of these virtues are meant to grow together as the Holy Spirit works in you. God's goal is to transform you into the image of Christ, and that involves shaping every aspect of your character. Each trait is like a piece of a puzzle that, when put together, forms the complete picture of who God wants you to be. For example, think about love and kindness. Love is at the heart of all the other traits, but it's hard to express true love without kindness. If someone claims to be loving but lacks kindness, their love may not fully reflect the selfless, compassionate love of Christ. Or consider patience and peace. When you are at peace with God and His plan, it becomes easier to be patient with others. All of these traits are interwoven, supporting and enhancing one another as we grow in the Spirit. It's also important to realize that we can't pick and choose which traits we want to focus on. We may be tempted to think, I'm naturally patient, but I'm just not a joyful person. Or we might say, I have a lot of self-control, but I'm not very gentle. That mindset is like looking at an orange and expecting one section to be sweet while the rest is sour. Just as each segment of the orange contributes to the overall taste and experience of the fruit, each quality of the spirit contributes to our overall spiritual maturity. When we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, He doesn't just refine one aspect of our character while leaving the others untouched. He brings balance and wholeness to who we are. If we are lacking in joy, He will work on that while also strengthening our love and peace. If we struggle with self-control, He will develop it alongside our faithfulness and gentleness. God is not a God of half measures. He wants to form the whole person in the image of Christ which means shaping every part of who we are. This is why it's crucial to see the fruit of the Spirit as one unified whole. When you're growing in the Spirit, it's not just about becoming more patient or more kind in isolation. It's about allowing God to transform your entire being so that all of these qualities, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control grow together in harmony. The result is a balanced, Christ-like character that reflects the fullness of God's work in your life. As we grow in the Spirit, we become more well-rounded, balanced and whole. There may be areas where we naturally excel, but that doesn't mean we get to neglect the other traits. God's Spirit works in us to ensure that we are not just strong in one area while weak in another. As he works in us, the single fruit becomes evident, showing that we are truly living in step with the Spirit and becoming more like Christ. This holistic growth is what makes us effective witnesses for Christ in the world as our lives reflect the beauty and power of God's transforming love. Love as the foundation. Let's begin with the first trait mentioned in the fruit of the Spirit, a love. Love isn't just one part of the fruit, it is the foundation. It's no coincidence that Paul begins with love in Galatians 5 verse 22. 
throughout scripture, love is repeatedly emphasized as the highest and most essential virtue. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13, Paul writes, but the greatest of these is love. He places love above faith and hope, underscoring its central role in the life of a believer. Why is love so foundational? Because everything else flows out of love. Think about it, God himself is love, 1 John 4 verse 8. Love is at the core of who God is and it is the essence of the Christian life. When Jesus was asked about the greatest commandment, he replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself, Matthew 22 verses 37 to 39. Love is the defining mark of a follower of Christ. Without love, nothing else we do or exhibit in our lives will have true, lasting meaning. When we consider the other characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and the rest, we see that they all depend on love. Love empowers each of these traits. Let's look at a few examples. Joy flows out of love. When you are filled with God's love, joy naturally follows. Joy is not based on circumstances but on the deep, abiding love of God in your heart. When you are secure in His love, joy becomes a constant even in difficult times. Peace is rooted in love. When we understand God's love for us, we can rest in His peace. We know that no matter what we face, His love will never fail. It is love that drives out fear, 1 John 4 verse 18, and then brings the peace that surpasses all understanding, Philippians 4 verse 7. Patience is an expression of love. True patience comes from a heart of love, love for God and love for others. When we love people, we are willing to be patient with them even when they frustrate or disappoint us. God's love enables us to extend grace and patience just as He does with us. Kindness and goodness are natural outflows of love. When we love others, we want to treat them with kindness and we desire to do good to them. It is love that moves us to act selflessly, seeking the best for others rather than ourselves. Faithfulness grows from a heart rooted in love. When we love God deeply, we are committed to being faithful to Him in all we do. Love fuels our loyalty and dedication not only to God but also to others as we build trustworthy and reliable relationships. Gentleness is love in action. Gentleness is the way love interacts with others with care, sensitivity, and respect. When we love someone, we handle them with gentleness just as Christ tenderly cares for us. Self-control is possible because of love. When we love God and others, we choose to control our impulses and desires for the sake of their well-being. Love gives us the strength to exercise self-control, putting the needs of others before our own wants. This is why love is foundational, it empowers and sustains every other quality. Without love, these virtues would be incomplete, shallow and unsustainable. As Paul so clearly says in 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 to 3, we could have the greatest gifts speak with the tongues of angels or give all we have to the poor, but without love it would mean nothing. Love is what gives meaning to every other virtue. In fact, we see the centrality of love most perfectly demonstrated in Jesus. His life, death, and resurrection were all acts of profound love. Everything he did, his healing, teaching, serving, and sacrifice was motivated by love for the Father and love for us. As followers of Christ, we are called to embody this same love. So, as we grow in the fruit of the Spirit, it's vital to remember that love is not just one part of the process, it's the very foundation upon which everything else is built. It is the love of God poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, Romans 5 verse 5, that makes it possible for us to grow in joy, peace, patience, and all the other aspects of the fruit. Without love, we can't experience the fullness of the other qualities. It's the fuel that empowers them, the glue that holds them together, and the force that propels them forward. As we cultivate love, both for God and for others, the other traits will naturally begin to blossom in our lives, forming a complete, unified fruit that reflects the heart of God.
the interconnectedness of the fruit. As we continue to explore the fruit of the Spirit, it's important to recognize that these traits don't function in isolation. Each aspect of the fruit is deeply interconnected and together they form a complete picture of the character God is cultivating in us through the Holy Spirit. Just like the different segments of an orange all contribute to the overall taste and texture of the fruit, these virtues, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are designed to work together in harmony, supporting and enhancing one another. Let's start by looking at two qualities that are often linked, joy and peace. When you experience the joy that comes from God, it often brings with it a sense of deep, abiding peace. Why? Because joy isn't dependent on circumstances, it flows from knowing God's love and salvation. When you have that joy in your heart, it naturally puts your mind and spirit at rest. You're less likely to be anxious or worried when you're filled with the joy of the Lord because you know that no matter what happens, you're secure in Him. That peace flows out of the joy and the two strengthen each other, creating a sense of inner calm and contentment even in the midst of life's challenges. Now think about patience and kindness. These two qualities also have a natural connection. When you are patient, it allows you to take a step back before reacting to situations or people. Patience gives you the ability to pause and consider how you're going to respond, which opens the door to kindness. Instead of reacting out of frustration or anger, patience gives you the space to choose a kind response. If we are honest, it's difficult to be kind when we are feeling impatient, but when we learn to practice patience, kindness flows more easily. In this way, patience and kindness support one another, helping us reflect Christ in our actions and attitudes. Another pair we can explore is faithfulness and self-control. Faithfulness refers to our loyalty and commitment to God and His ways. When we are faithful, we are dedicated to living according to God's principles and commands, even when it's difficult or inconvenient. But here's where the connection comes in. Faithfulness makes self-control easier. When you're fully committed to God, when your faithfulness is strong, it becomes more natural to exercise self-control. You're less likely to be swayed by temptation because you've already made up your mind to follow God no matter what. Your faithfulness strengthens your ability to control your desires and impulses, helping you stay on the path God has set before you. On the flip side, self-control also feeds into faithfulness. When you practice self-control, choosing to deny your fleshly desires and stay disciplined in your walk with God, you're building the kind of faithfulness that endures. It's one thing to say you're faithful, but it's self-control that puts that faithfulness into action. Each time you choose self-control, you're reinforcing your faithfulness to God, showing Him through your choices that you are fully devoted to Him. Over time, this leads to a stronger, more steadfast faith that can withstand trials and temptations. These examples show just how interconnected the aspects of the fruit are. None of them stands alone. Instead, they work together, each one strengthening and reinforcing the others. Love, as we discussed earlier, is the foundation that ties everything together, but beyond that, the various traits interact with one another to create a balanced, whole and Christ-like character in us. Take a moment to reflect on your own life. You might notice that as you grow in one area, such as patience, you start to see changes in another, like kindness. Or perhaps you're developing more self-control, and as a result, your faithfulness to God is becoming stronger. That's the beauty of the fruit of the Spirit. It's not about growing one trait at a time in isolation. Instead, as we yield to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to work in us, He grows these qualities together, shaping us into the image of Christ. Think about a well-tuned instrument in an orchestra. Each note, when played on its own, is beautiful. But when all the instruments come together, harmonizing and complementing one another, the result is a magnificent symphony. Similarly, the virtues of the fruit of the Spirit create a beautiful harmony in our lives when they work together. Love harmonizes with joy, 
Peace blends with patience, faithfulness supports self-control, and kindness enhances goodness. The end result is a life that not only reflects Christ to the world, but also experiences the fullness of what it means to live by the Spirit. So, as you seek to grow in these traits, remember that you're not working on them one by one in isolation. God is shaping your entire character, and each aspect of the fruit will support and enhance the others as the Holy Spirit works within you. It's a unified, interconnected fruit that reflects the beauty of a life surrendered to God. The Spirit's role in producing the fruit. Here's the key truth about the fruit of the Spirit, we don't produce it on our own. This fruit isn't something we can manufacture through sheer willpower or human effort. It's the result of the Holy Spirit working within us, shaping and transforming us from the inside out. Sometimes, in our Christian walk, we may feel like we are falling short in one or more of these areas. Maybe we are struggling to be patient, or perhaps kindness doesn't come as naturally to us as we'd like. When we notice these gaps in our lives, it's easy to feel discouraged or think we are failing. But here's the encouraging part, it's not about perfection, it's about progression. God is not expecting you to instantly have all these traits in full measure. Instead, he's looking for a heart that is willing to grow, a heart that is yielded to the Spirit. Growth is a process, and the Holy Spirit is our guide on that journey. As you yield to the Holy Spirit, he works in you, helping you grow step by step in love, joy, peace, patience, and all the other qualities. The Spirit gently cultivates these traits in your life, much like a gardener tending to a plant. He waters, nourishes, and prunes so that over time the fruit becomes evident. You might not see immediate, dramatic changes, but as you stay connected to God, you will see steady growth in your character. Think of it like a tree planted by streams of water. Psalm 1 verse 3 beautifully describes the person who is rooted in God's word, saying that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. This image gives us a clear picture of how spiritual growth works. A tree doesn't strain or struggle to produce fruit. Its only job is to stay rooted and connected to its source of life. As long as it's planted by the stream and drawing nourishment from the water, fruit will naturally come in the right season. In the same way, when we stay connected to God, the Holy Spirit will produce His fruit in us. Our primary responsibility is not to try harder but to stay connected to the source, God Himself. We stay connected through prayer, reading and meditating on His Word and surrendering our lives to Him daily. As we do this, the Holy Spirit works in our hearts, shaping us to become more like Christ. This means that even when we face challenges, frustrations, or moments where we feel we are not measuring up, we can rest in the knowledge that God is still at work in us. Philippians 1 verse 6 gives us this assurance, He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God is faithful to complete what He has started in you. It's not about achieving the perfect character of a knight, but about walking in step with the Spirit and allowing Him to bring about the growth. Just as fruit takes time to grow and ripen, so does spiritual maturity. There will be seasons where your love grows stronger, where peace feels more abundant, or where patience seems easier to practice. And there may be seasons where you struggle more. But in every season, the Holy Spirit is there, working beneath the surface, cultivating the fruit in your life. One of the best ways to cultivate this connection with the Spirit is through a posture of surrender. Every day, we can ask the Holy Spirit to fill us afresh and guide us. By surrendering our own desires, ambitions, and struggles, we make room for Him to work. It's when we stop trying to control everything ourselves that we see the Spirit's work most clearly. The Apostle Paul emphasizes this in Galatians 5 verse 16 when he says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. When we walk by the Spirit, meaning we depend on His guidance and power, the desires of the flesh, those things that keep us from bearing fruit, begin to lose their grip. 
Our focus shifts from trying to meet worldly standards of success or happiness to simply walking in step with the Spirit. As we do, the fruit naturally begins to grow and flourish. It's also important to recognize that the Holy Spirit is our helper, not just in times of spiritual growth, but also in our struggles. When you find yourself lacking in a particular area, whether it's patience, kindness, or self-control, bring that struggle to God in prayer. The Spirit will strengthen you in your weakness. Romans 8 verse 26 reminds us, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. God doesn't leave us to produce this fruit on our own. He empowers us every step of the way through His Spirit. We are like trees planted by streams of water, and the Holy Spirit is the source of life that nourishes us. As long as we stay connected to God through prayer, His Word, and surrender, the Spirit will faithfully produce His fruit in us. Our job is to remain rooted in Him, trusting that He will bring about the growth even when it feels slow or difficult. Remember, it's not about striving for perfection, but allowing the Spirit to lead you in a process of transformation, step by step, into the image of Christ. Walking in the Spirit Galatians 5 verse 25 gives us a clear and powerful directive, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. This verse highlights an essential truth of the Christian life, we aren't just meant to receive the Holy Spirit once and then go about our lives unchanged. Instead, we are called to walk in the Spirit, continually aligning ourselves with His guidance and leading. Walking in the Spirit is a daily, moment-by-moment -moment choice, one that involves surrender, obedience, and an ongoing relationship with God. So, what does it mean to keep in step with the Spirit? Think of it like walking alongside a trusted friend who knows the way. As long as you stay close to that friend, walking together, you'll stay on the right path. But if you wander off, distracted or trying to find your own way, you risk getting lost. The same applies to our walk with the Holy Spirit. He is our guide, leading us in the direction God wants us to go, but we must choose to walk with Him step by step rather than relying on our own understanding or strength. Walking in the Spirit is not a one-time decision, it's a continuous, moment-by-moment -moment surrender. It means inviting the Holy Spirit into every part of your life, your relationships, your thoughts, your decisions, your actions, and allowing Him to shape you according to God's will. It's about staying in tune with His voice and being sensitive to His promptings, whether that's in the big decisions you face or the small, everyday choices. The Holy Spirit isn't just concerned with the major events of our lives, He wants to be involved in the details, guiding us and producing His fruit in us as we yield to Him. One of the beautiful aspects of walking in the Spirit is that it transforms how we live. It changes not only our outward actions, but also our hearts and minds. When we walk in the Spirit, we become more aware of His presence in our daily lives. We begin to see situations through the lens of God's love and grace, responding to challenges with patience, kindness, and peace. Our desires start to align with God's desires, and the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, and the rest begins to flourish in our lives. But how do we practically walk in the Spirit? It all starts with surrender. We can't do it in our own strength, and we don't have to. Walking in the Spirit means acknowledging that we need God's help and asking the Holy Spirit to fill us, guide us, and work in us. Each day, we can begin by surrendering our hearts to God, asking Him to lead us and produce His fruit in us. This kind of surrender isn't a one-time prayer, it's an ongoing attitude of humility and dependence on God. A key part of this surrender is inviting the Holy Spirit to guide our thoughts. Our minds are where the battle often begins, and when we allow the Holy Spirit to direct our thinking, it shapes how we respond to situations and people. Romans 12 verse 2 reminds us to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The Holy Spirit works to renew our minds, helping us to think in line with God's truth rather than being swayed by worldly influences or our own impulses. As we surrender our thoughts to the Spirit, we find that our actions begin to reflect His character more and more.
Another crucial aspect of walking in the Spirit is spending time with God. This is where transformation happens when we intentionally draw near to God through prayer, worship, and reading His Word. The more time we spend in His presence, the more we are shaped by His Spirit. Just like a tree planted by streams of water needs a constant source of nourishment to grow, we need to stay connected to God if we want to bear fruit. John 15 verse 5 reminds us of this when Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Our ability to produce the fruit of the Spirit is directly tied to our connection with God. Reading and meditating on Scripture is one of the primary ways we stay connected to God and learn to walk in the Spirit. God's Word is like a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, Psalm 119 verse 105, helping us discern the Spirit's leading. As we immerse ourselves in Scripture, the Holy Spirit illuminates the truths we need to apply to our lives. He brings to mind the verses we need in moments of temptation or difficulty, reminding us of God's promises and commands. Through the Word, the Spirit shapes our hearts and minds aligning us more and more with God's will. Prayer is another vital way to walk in the Spirit. Prayer is not just a time to present our requests to God, it's an ongoing conversation with Him throughout the day. When we pray, we invite the Holy Spirit to be an active part of our lives to guide us, comfort us, and strengthen us. It's in these moments of prayer that the Spirit often reveals areas where we need to grow, bringing conviction, encouragement, and direction. By staying in constant communication with God, we open ourselves to the Spirit's work in our hearts, allowing Him to lead us step by step. As we continue to surrender to God, spend time in His Word, and engage in prayer, we will begin to see the fruit of the Spirit growing in our lives. The change may be gradual, but it will be real. Over time, the Holy Spirit will develop in us a greater capacity for love, deeper joy, unshakable peace, and more patience, kindness, and self-control. These qualities aren't something we can manufacture on our own, they are the supernatural work of the Spirit brewing in us as we walk in step with Him. Walking in the Spirit is an invitation to live a life fully surrendered to God, one where we allow the Holy Spirit to guide, shape, and transform us. It's not about trying harder or doing more, it's about staying connected to God and yielding to His Spirit each day. As we do, we'll see His fruit begin to flourish in our lives, bringing us closer to the image of Christ and enabling us to live out the love, joy, peace, and all the other qualities that reflect God's heart. Closing Thoughts The fruit of the Spirit is a beautiful reflection of God's character at work in us. Remember, it's not about focusing on one area and neglecting others. God's Spirit is transforming you in every way, producing a fruit that is whole and complete. Take time this week to reflect on these qualities. Ask God to show you how He's growing this fruit in your life and where He wants to bring more balance. Stay connected to Him and you will see this fruit flourish in every part of your journey. Let's pray as we wind up. Heavenly Father, may your name be glorified. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that leads us, guides us, and produces your fruit in our lives. Thank you for this time in your word for opening our eyes to the beauty of walking in step with the Spirit. Lord, we acknowledge that we can't grow these qualities on our own and we need your Spirit to work within us. Right now, we surrender ourselves to you. We ask that you fill us afresh with your Spirit, empowering us to live lives that reflect your love, joy, peace, patience, and all the other beautiful traits you desire for us. Help us to stay connected to you, to seek you daily through prayer and your word, and to trust that you are faithful to complete the good work you've started in us. Father, give us the strength and grace to walk in the Spirit every day, moment by moment. Let our lives be a testimony of your transforming power, and may we bear fruit that brings glory to your name. We thank you for your love and for your constant presence with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you as you walk in the Spirit and allow his fruit to grow in your life. 
If you enjoyed this presentation, we'd love to hear your thoughts, so please share your opinions in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, and a huge thank you to all our subscribers for your support.